नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Welcome back. We will now look at the final method of controller tuning and this time we will be talking about a method uh, which uh, falls in the domain of robust controller and this will be a method based on frequency response. So we will look at frequency response. Based controller tuning. And as I said, this is under the domain of robust control design. So what we are interested in is, let us say our process has a transfer function of this form. And you can use any of the heuristic method or uh, any direct synthesis method uh, or criteria based method to design a controller. So you use this model to design or tune a controller. In reality, <coughs> if Kp changes to let us say Kp increases by 5%, or your date time was wrongly calculated and actual date time is 10% extra of this. Under such scenarios, would the controller still perform? So we are looking at uh, the robustness of the controller that if some of the process parameters so in the presence of certain errors or variations in the process parameter, would the controller still perform uh, the way it is supposed to or would it still maintain the stability of the closed loop system? So if your controller is able to handle such a large variation in terms of process parameters, then you can say that the corresponding controller is robustly designed. If not, uh, you will say it is not robust to modeling errors or errors to parameter values because these models are typically obtained from data and uh, they may not capture the reality to the great extent. So there is always a possibility that some errors might happen within uh, these parameters. So your controller should be able to handle any variations in such kind of parameters. So when you want to do a design such that it allows you a certain freedom in terms of variations in the process parameters, that particular method will be known as a robust controller design and uh, we will be we will see how such a controller can be tuned by using frequency response. So for that uh, we will revisit uh, what is frequency response and uh, what is its role in terms of stability. <coughs> and its relation to stability. So we have seen that frequency response is if you have a process, uh, you subject it to a sinusoid, then your output will also be a sinusoid with a different amplitude ratio and a different phase than the input. So when you capture this as a function of omega, which is the frequency of sinusoidal oscillation, you will get the frequency response. And how is it related to stability? So for stability, or I will say marginal stability. Or this limiting stability, stability limit. Uh, what we calculate is a crossover frequency such that when amplitude ratio is e when phase is equal to minus pi, amplitude ratio is equal to one. That will give you a marginal stability. So that. Uh, point into this AR phase and omega plane which are the 
based on these three parameters if you select if you find a point uh, where phase is minus pi and amplitude ratio is minus uh, amplitude request is ratio is equal to 1 then that system is at the limit of stability. So, in order to ensure stability there are two possibilities there are two options. Option 1 is at phase equal to minus pi you can make AR to be less than 1. So, automatically uh, you can ensure that the system is stable. There is another way of ensuring stability that when your amplitude ratio is equal to 1 your phi should be greater than minus pi. So, this is based on an assumption that monotonous nature of A, R and phi. So, if your amplitude ratio and phase are monotonous functions of omega which is also a requirement of a body stability criteria uh, based on which uh, this particular condition is desi designed, then you can say that when your amplitude ratio is equal to 1 at that frequency if your phase is uh, still away from minus pi by the time it reaches minus pi the amplitude ratio would have fallen below 1. So, both these uh, conditions are sort of equivalent when you say both uh, these are monotonously decreasing functions of omega and uh, you can use any of these conditions to ensure stability. So, these uh, two conditions will give rise to two design parameters uh, in terms of frequency response uh, based design. So, one is known as a gain margin. So, gain margin is defined as an inverse of amplitude ratio when phase is equal to minus pi. So, it tells me uh, that so if gain margin is equal to 1 <coughs> then I have A r at phase equal to minus pi equal to 1. So, that means it is a stability limit. If the gain margin is greater than 1, you have closed loop stability. And we can show that uh, higher the gain margin, uh, more is the tolerance in terms of uh, control uh, proper process gain errors. <coughs> the process gain. <coughs> so, typically gain margin is selected beyond 1.7. So, which will ensure that if only process uh, gain uh, has certain uncertainty then up to 70 percent uncertainty can be accommodated by ensuring a gain, uh, by keeping gain margin of 1.7. So, even if the gain increases by 70 percent uh, the controller would still remain stable. So, that is the primary notion of uh, what is a gain margin. So, it tells you how much additional safety you are putting in. So, whatever beyond 1 is the safety uh, which we are putting in to in order to counter any uncertainty in the process gain. Similarly, we can also uh, define uh, a criteria based on the phase. So, that is known as a phase margin. So, phase margin is defined as pi plus phase when amplitude ratio is equal to 1. So, when phase margin is equal to 0, we have phase at amplitude ratio minus 1, amplitude ratio equal to 1 is minus pi. So, again that is the limit of stability. If the phase margin is positive, uh, what we have is at A r equal to 1, your phase will be greater than minus pi. <coughs> so, 
and therefore you will ensure stability and higher the phase margin higher is the tolerance to error in that time so this uh, deals with any uncertainty in terms of date time calculation so if uh, the process has a lot of variability in terms of date time then we can go for a higher value of phase margin and you can know that uh, these gain margin as well as phase margin as they are dependent on amplitude ratio and phase calculations uh, they are also functions of controller parameters so by selecting a particular gain margin and phase margin uh, we will get equations based on the controller parameters which will be kc tau i and tau d and then we can accordingly select the values of controller parameters which will ensure a certain minimum uh, gain margin and a minimum phase margin uh, typically uh, phase margin of greater than 5 by 6 or 30 degrees is quite common <coughs> So let me show you how these are related to uncertainties. So let us say our process transfer function for which we have designed the controller is this. So this is uh, the transfer function used for design. And let us say the actual transfer function is has certain error in terms of gain tau remains the same and certain uncertainty in terms of date time so this can be uncertainty or error in gain this is uncertainty or error in date time. So now if we see what is the amplitude ratio of the G actual is equal to amplitude ratio of your original GP because this is not going to cause any contribution towards uh, the amplitude ratio 1 plus epsilon <coughs> so 1 plus epsilon is equal to amplitude ratio of actual over amplitude ratio of the controller transfer function the transfer function which is used for controller design so for stability <coughs> when omega is equal to omega cross over we want ar g actual to be less than 1 <coughs> so we want or at marginal stability g actual equal to 1 so you can show that 1 plus epsilon is equal to 1 over AR of GP at omega cross over which is equal to 1 over AR of GP when phi is equal to minus pi which is equal to the gain margin. So gain margin is related to any uncertainty which we can tolerate in terms of the process gain value. Similarly we can make a case for phase margin. So if we say 
phase of G actual is equal to phase of G P minus delta omega cross over and now uh, we want to say that or at omega. So, we want to say that uh, at for stability limit uh, when p is equal to minus pi a r equal to 1. So, we can say that minus pi is equal to phase of g p when a r equal to 1 minus delta omega. So, delta omega is equal to pi plus phase of g p when a r equal to 1 which is equal to the phase margin. So, you can say that uh, whatever phase margin we choose uh, higher the phase margin higher will be the tolerance in terms of the dead time of the process. So, by using all this uh, by this method uh, we can select uh, we can specify a certain gain margin or a phase margin and accordingly uh, we can uh, find out the controller parameters. Let us now see how we can use this uh, frequency response uh, tuning method for a simple example. Let us consider that your process is uh, first order plus dead time. And we are going to control it by using a proportional controller because it simplifies uh, the analysis. And for simplicity, we will also assume that these two transfer functions are also unity and we have already seen uh, how we can make this assumption. So, let us uh, now see the overall open loop transfer function for this process would be 2 k c over 3 s plus 1 e raised to minus 0 0.5 s. So, we are trying to find the Kc and uh, the goal here is to design a controller so that we have at least gain margin of 2 and phase margin of at least pi by 6 or 30 degrees. So, let us see if that is our goal in terms of design, how do we go about finding the value of this controller parameter k c, which is a single parameter here. So, let us uh, first uh, find out what are the uh, corresponding amplitude ratios and the phase equations. So, a r in this case will be equal to kpkc over under root of 1 plus tau square omega square which uh, is actually equal to twice kc over root of 1 plus 9 omega square and the phase uh, will be equal to minus tan inverse tau omega minus td of s which in this case is equal to minus of tan inverse of 3 omega minus of 0.5 s. So, we have now equations for amplitude ratio and phase. So, in order to let us first uh, see how we can design it for the gain margin. So, gain margin uh, we know is the reciprocal of amplitude ratio when your phi is equal to minus pi or at your crossover frequency. So, let us first try to find out uh, what is the crossover frequency for this system. So, we will have to equate this to minus pi that will give us the omega cross over. So, if you solve this equation, you will get omega cross over is equal to 3.3405 radian per second. So, now this value of omega cross over what we want is uh, uh, we will have uh, the phase of minus pi 
so we want to see what is the amplitude ratio in this case and that amplitude ratio uh, we want to be at least 2. So by using this what we get is your amplitude ratio at phi equal to minus pi will be equal to 1 over 2 which uh, we already have calculated that it is going to be equal to 2 kc over root of 1 plus 9 omega cross over square. So by substituting the value of omega cross over here we can find out kc. So the kc for gain margin comes out to be 2.5178. So if I use a, gain, a controller gain of 2.5178 then my gain margin will be equal to 2. So, for achieving gain margin of at least 2, my Kc should always be less than equal to Kc of gain margin. So, if I use any controller gain which is less than this, then I can ensure that my gain margin is going to be at least 2. Let us now see uh, the second part which is the phase margin design. So for phase margin design uh, what we have is uh, phase margin is equal to pi plus phase at uh, AR equal to 1. So what we are interested in is we want to find out uh, what is the corresponding phase uh, <coughs> when AR is equal to 1. So, we will use the phase margin of pi by 6 is equal to pi plus phase at AR equal to 1. So, that gives us phase at AR equal to 1 comes out to be minus 5 pi by 6. So now uh, we have the equation for phase, so we will write that minus 5 pi by 6 will be equal to minus of tan inverse 3 omega at AR equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 omega AR equal to 1. So we can again solve this equation uh, to get omega at AR equal to 1 which in this case uh, comes out to be 2.373 gradients per second. So now we have this new value of AR uh, omega at which AR is equal to 1. So we know AR is twice Kc over root of 1 plus 9 omega square. So when I say AR equal to 1, this will be equal to 1. So by substituting the value of omega AR equal to 1 into this formula, we will get Kc for phase margin comes out to be 3.5944. So to ensure that phase margin is at least pi by 6 my Kc should be less than equal to Kc of phase margin. So we have now found two limits on the controller gain, one is based on the phase margin and one is based on the gain margin. So in order to satisfy both these constraints, so to satisfy our goal of gain margin greater than equal to 2 and phase margin greater than equal to pi by 6, our Kc should be less than equal to the two conditions which we have, uh, one was 2.5178 and Kc should be less than equal to 3.5944. So the Kc which we will use uh, would be 2.5178 so that it is it satisfies both these equations. So if you calculate uh, if the controller gain is this, what you get is your gain margin is 2 
and your phase margin in this case is 54 degrees so which is definitely greater than 30 degrees. So this is how uh, you can uh, design a, a controller by using uh, frequency response uh, based criteria like we used uh, here in terms of phase margin and gain margin. So to summarize, uh, we have seen uh, this entire feedback control design system, uh, what we have seen is it consists of three uh, sub problems. Uh, for the first problem is about the synthesis uh, where we want to identify what are the controlled variables, manipulated variables and how do you pair them. Uh, the second part of the problem is a selection problem where we depending on what uh, needs to be controlled, uh, what type of a simple controller has to be used whether it should be a P controller, PI controller or a PID controller. And then lastly we looked at uh, four different methods in which uh, we can select the parameters for the con feedback controller. Uh, those are based on performance based tuning, uh, it can be a heuristic based tuning, it can be a direct synthesis based tuning or uh, just now what we looked at uh, is a frequency response based controller tuning and uh, that is how uh, you would end up selecting the values of controller parameters. So we will stop here, thank you. Oh,